Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, The Millennial Investor, and today, guys, we have some very interesting news to go over. We're going over Nikola Corporation. The amount of news that this company has seen over the last couple of weeks is incredible. So what we're all going to go over in this video, we're going to give three different video segments that I'm going to show. We're going to show the Nikola semi-truck in motion. Keywords there are in motion. So we'll be showing that. We'll also be showing <laughs> Trevor Milton and one of his associates comparing the Nikola Badger to the Ford Raptor. We'll also be showing one more post, one that I found from Wall Street Bets, a very popular trading platform on Reddit where people bet millions of dollars on crazy option plays and I've never seen more negative sentiment around a company from Wall Street Bets than I have from Nikola Corporation. And in this video they're talking about Nikola compares Badger, which doesn't even exist, to Audi R8. This is actively running as a Facebook ad. What we'll also be going over is their quarterly revenue, which was only funded by one customer and that one customer was the CEO, their founder Trevor Milton. We'll also be going over their balance sheet, their net income. We'll be going over some actual quantitative analysis, looking at some of the numbers behind this company to show you how really good it really is. We'll also be looking at this little paragraph highlighted, talking about Trevor hiring his little brother as a very, very in-depth, high-up position. We'll be going over that. And last but not least, we'll also be going over Nikola founder Trevor Milton to voluntarily step down as executive chairman, the stock plunges. So a lot of information to go over with Nikola today, guys. And like I said, with him stepping down as CEO currently today, it is already down 18% from the time I'm filming this. It was actually down more. I think it was close to 30% at market open. But overall, guys, before we go over all this information, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Jordan. I'm the millennial investor. I'm a dividend investor. So Nikola is not a stock that I, or I really think anybody should really be investing in. But I track my annual dividend income, my monthly dividend income, my portfolio value, and even disclose something that hardly any other YouTubers out there disclose. I disclose my monthly YouTube income, and there it is broken down by category right there. And if you want to support me and you're new to the channel, one of the ways that you can do that is use this link that is down in the description. This little link right here is down in the description of all these videos. M1 Finance is a brokerage that I use. It's absolutely free to use. We've had 34 people sign up, so please go ahead and get that to 35. And for the month of September, instead of getting $10, you'll get $20 for signing up. And at the end of this video, I'll be giving an update on all of my investments. I currently own 27 different companies, so these are the companies that I own right here. And if you want to check this out for yourself, once again, in the description, this link is also in the description to view my portfolio. So let's go ahead and get started with video number one. This is the first video that we're going to watch, and this one is the Nikola semi-truck in motion. Now notice how they never say driving. This is just in motion. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this right now. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole premise of the video. It keeps on going, it gives you some good angle shots, but do you see the truck in motion? You'd probably be thinking, wow, this semi-truck is driving, right? Well, not quite. It is actually rolling down a hill. And a lot of Nikola's high up board members and CEO like Trevor has made investors believe that the semi-truck is driving itself. But what they've done is give this clever little wordplay saying that it's in motion. So now that they've had tons of allegations, tons of different legal battles going after them, and this is obviously a fraudulent video, making it look like it's driving when it's not in motion. Now let's go ahead and look at another video real quick. This is a segment called Nikola vs. the World, and they have that with two different videos comparing two different vehicles. And the first one we're going to watch is the Ford Raptor. So just go ahead and watch a couple seconds of this real quick. Just for fun, let's compare one of the most popular trucks on the market, the Ford Raptor, to the Nikola Badger. Hey Trevor, I'm the Raptor. I got 450 horsepower. I got 906 with the Nikola Badger. Okay, well, I've got 510 foot-pounds of torque. I got 980 foot-pounds of torque. Double again. Okay, well, as the Raptor, I've got an approach angle of 25 and a half degrees. The Nikola Badger's got an approach angle of 35 degrees, and not only that, we can take up to 48 inches of water without affecting anything in the truck. As you can see, these are not apples to apples. Okay, so that video pretty much gives you a good idea of what I'm trying to tell you guys about. This is comparing the Ford Raptor, you know Ford, a company that produces vehicles, that has a business model back behind it for over 100 years. They're comparing that to the Nikola Badger, you know that car that doesn't exist yet. 
So these are some pretty impressive stats for a car that hadn't even came out. And last but not least, I want to go ahead and show you one more video. I want to show you this one. Once again, I found this on Wall Street Bets. This is my source. This is sad when the information on Wall Street Bets is a little bit more reliable than that on Nikola Corporation. So let's go ahead and look at this. On today's edition of Badger vs. the World, we've got an Audi R8. Now this is a supercar. But let's do some quick comparisons. What's your acceleration? Zero to 60 in three seconds. Badger, zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. What is your fuel range? 350 miles on one tank. Well, the Badger does 300 miles on battery alone, all the way up to 600 miles with the fuel cell. What's your horsepower? 610 horses. And the Badger has 906, along with 900 foot-pounds of torque. What's the price? A lot, 200K plus. 200K, so you can buy roughly three Badgers for the price of one Audi R8. Okay, so once again, this is comparing the Audi R8 to a car that doesn't exist yet. Let's go ahead and rewind it here. Let's go ahead and go to the beginning of the video. Do you notice here, this guy on the right is standing behind an Audi R8, but the guy on the left is standing behind a picture of a truck. That is what he's comparing this to. This picture with this formatted little letters that look really cool, the Nikola Badger, you know, this truck that doesn't exist, but it's way faster, way cheaper, and just overall way better than the Audi R8. And I think if anything wraps us up any better, it's this top comment, this comment right here. This was the number one voted comment on Reddit, and I think it is a perfect example of what I'm trying to point out here. They should have just gone all out. 6,000 miles per charge, 5,000 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 0.3 seconds, towing capacity of 6 million pounds, has active camouflage, has a missile turret behind the headlights, and it can fly. Why set the stats so low when we're playing make-believe? If this doesn't wrap up the information behind the Nikola Badger, I don't think that does it any better. And they're running this as a Facebook ad, trying to get people to buy this car that will completely not match up anywhere close to these numbers whatsoever. Now, regardless of all that, let's look at some of the numbers. Maybe, okay, maybe they're setting really high expectations for these vehicles, and maybe they will sell a lot. Maybe they will come out with a great vehicle. Maybe they won't be as good as this. But let's go ahead and just look at some numbers because numbers don't lie. Well, the first number I want to look at is their quarterly revenue. Their quarterly revenue last quarter was $36,000. Now before I go any further, you remember how they were comparing one of their vehicles to a great car company, one of the only one of two American car companies to not go bankrupt, which is Ford stock. Ford is currently a $28.8 billion market cap. So the total value of this company is $28 billion. But when we look at Nikola, their current valuation is 13 billion, almost half of that of Ford. Now that's really impressive until you look at one thing. Nikola has yet to produce a car. They hadn't even got anything into production and out on the road yet. There's just a bunch of false promises. And if you go ahead and look at the share price, $80 a share. It's currently trading at 27. The other day when this was $80 a share, at the time compared to Ford stock, if you actually take the math and add it up, the market cap of Nikola was worth more than Ford Motor Company. Ford, the company that's been around forever, has produced millions and millions of vehicles. Been around since 1903, 117 years. Ford is one of the most successful car companies to ever set foot on the planet. Now this company is worth more than Ford. I just want to keep that in mind for a second. That this company, for a minute, was worth more than Ford Corporation. And I think the fact that they hadn't even come out with any vehicle whatsoever and had tons of fraudulent claims behind them, this does not even be in the billion dollar market cap, maybe not even in the millions of dollars. This is completely false pricing on Wall Street, and I'll go ahead and show you some of our reasonings behind this, some of my numbers behind that, regardless of all these bold claims that Nikola is coming out with. Nikola's entire quarterly revenue of 36000 was from solar installation for the executive chairman. Okay, so they had one customer, which was the CEO. The CEO was their one customer, and what did he use that money for when he got this big payout for getting Nikola stock price way above its valuation of what it's really worth? Nikola Motor had Trevor Milton drops $32.5 million on 2,000 acre Utah ranch. Look at this home. It's beautiful. Incredible. This home is absolutely awesome. There's only one problem. How he got the money was by manipulating shareholders and getting the stock price to sky high levels. Now, the only revenue that this company has produced was setting up some solar panels for this awesome house. Uh, that's great for Nikola. What a great statement that they can say that they made $36,000 in revenue from a $13 billion company. Now, regardless, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and look at their numbers. Let's look at the 2018 numbers in revenue. Zero dollars. 
Let's go ahead and look at the 2019 numbers in revenue. Okay, if you add that up, uh, what's zero plus zero? Oh, zero. Zero dollars is also what they produced in 2019. Let's go ahead and look at their quarterly numbers because this is the only moment where you can find any small amounts of revenue. In 2020, the first quarter, 0 0.06 in revenue. And in 2020, the second quarter, 0 0.04. That's what the solar panels are coming through. And if we go down here to their operating income and their net income, their operating income, negative, 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 negative. Their net income, their bottom line, you know, the thing that is so important for profitability. Let's look at these last two numbers. Negative, negative. This company is not producing anything. They're making tons of false promises and they're not selling any cars. If they're going to lie about the specs that the car is producing, at least produce something, at least have something to show for it. Even if it's not legit, at least we have an idea of what we could base our decisions off of. You're just making false promises. Now let's keep on going further and let's go ahead and look at this little article right here. The executive behind Nikola's rollout of hydrogen infrastructure is the former CEO and general manager of a golf club in Idaho. Its director of hydrogen production is Milton's younger brother, Travis, whose previous experience doesn't involve hydrogen at all. His LinkedIn profile shows that he was a self-employed and largely worked on driveway pouring. The firm's chief engineer has a background in software and development and pinball machine repair. So when we look at their firm's chief engineer has a background in software development and pinball machine repair. Pinball machines is what this guy worked on. So what about his little brother? What about Travis? He is at this very intricate, high-level role. This is usually the type of thing that maybe a scientist or an engineer, someone with years' worth of experience in the field would usually get involved in. It's the director of hydrogen production. That sounds like a very intricate job. I probably wouldn't be able to do it, and neither would probably 99% of you watching. Now, what he did was he went ahead and hired his little brother, Travis, to do the job. Now, does Travis have experience in this field? Has he worked with hydrogen before? Has he worked with hydrogen production? Does he have some kind of very high-level collegiate background or something like that? Nope, uh, he, he's poured concrete before, uh, driveway pouring specifically. He, he's messed with concrete. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and move on past that. I'll go ahead and let you uh, stew in your own opinions about that, about hiring little brother Travis as the head of hydrogen production. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at what happens today. Let's go ahead and look at what their CEO does. So let's wrap it all up here. They're making lies about the cars. They're producing basically no revenue whatsoever. They're extremely unprofitable. They're making all these uh, huge promises. And they got a valuation that's half of that of Ford. And at one point, even, even higher than that of Ford. And the CEO who has founded this company, who has made this company get to an incredible stock price of where it's at, he took that money and he bought an incredible house hired his little brother, gave him a fat salary, and keep on making these promises to customers and shareholders about what the Nikola Badger can do with no real results whatsoever. Now, after all that has been wrapped up, let's see what their CEO does. Nikola founder Trevor Milton to voluntarily step down as executive chairman. The stock plunges. That is why the stock is down massively today, currently almost 20% down. The reason he stepped down is because he wanted to make a statement about the ocean of lies. So I'll go ahead and read these bullet points. Pretty much wraps it up. Nikola announced early Monday that founder Trevor Milton is voluntarily stepping down from his roles as executive chairman and a member of its boards. The announcement comes after short-selling firm Hindenburg Research accused Nikola of making an ocean of lies. The company pushed back on the accusation saying there was dozens of inaccurate allegations in the report. In an early Monday tweet, Milton said, I intend to defend myself against false allegations leveled against me by outside detractors. Now to go ahead and wrap this up without dragging this on any longer, Hindenburg Research was the one who really carried out this information. They really researched this company and all the lies that they have behind them. Now they made the accusation saying that Nikola rolled that semi-truck down the hill. And then Nikola admitted that they were rolling the truck down the hill, that it was not driving, it was just in motion. Now, also what they did is that they're short selling the stock. They're short selling the stock, and then Trevor Milton is coming out and saying that they're basically just trying to take down Nikola so they can get a profit. Now, regardless of what you think about that, this has nothing to do with Hindenburg. This is all about Nikola and the promises that they're making to shareholders and customers that are complete lies. And Trevor Milton, the worst thing he could do if it doesn't look any worse from buying mansions to hiring his little brother in roles that he's not qualified for to making lies to shareholders about trucks driving when they're really not. After all that, what does he do? When things get tough, you step down from the role because it's just a little too hard to handle. So guys, that said, 
if you're wanting to invest in a company, there's lots of electric car companies that are getting all different types of hypes right now. We look at Tesla. Its company value has skyrocketed to a $400 billion company. This stock just five years ago was about a $40 stock, $50 stock. It is now in the 400s, and at one point it was actually over the 500s. Let's look at other electric car companies. One that a lot of my friends talk about is Workhorse. Workhorse is a stock that just recently was a $1 stock. It's a $30 stock now. That is absolutely incredible. And we can look at all different examples of this, but the point is, when you look at these different car companies, these electric car companies, look at ones that are at least bringing in revenue, bringing in profits, or at least have some realistic type of numbers that they can put out to investors. Tesla is a perfect example. The reason that this car company has went from $400 billion is not just because of the cars. Not only do they have credible growth numbers to show behind it, they have some great numbers, they have great cars, great technology, patents, an incredible CEO, all those different types of things makes up for an explosion in stock price like Tesla, but at least Tesla is at least somewhat legitimized. We could argue back and forth all, the, all day whether or not Tesla is legitimate or not, but whether or not you agree with me, I think Tesla is a lot better investment than investing in something like a Nikola. And I'm not even the biggest fan ever of investing in, say, a workhorse, but if I had to choose between investing in workhorse or investing in Nikola, I would throw every dollar I had into workhorse or Tesla or really any other company out there than investing in Nikola. This is the type of company that I think, I'm going to go ahead and make a bold prediction here, I think that a couple years from now, I think that Nikola will be at zero. I think it might take a year, it might take two years, however long it might take, but whenever the SEC really hones down on this company, and when investors start to realize that the profits are absolutely nowhere to be found, I think that this company is eventually going to go to zero. I've only said that about one other time on my channel, and it was about Chesapeake stock. We search CHK here. That's right. Chesapeake doesn't come up anymore. The company that lives right by my house, their headquarters. They just went bankrupt this year because of the massive debt that they have. Now, Nikola, I'm sure it'll probably get shut down, not for its financials, but for its lies and allegations. But regardless of that, guys, if you're wanting to invest in a company, don't invest in Nikola. Invest in pretty much anything else. But that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Thank you for watching. You made it all the way to the end. I have 34 people signed up. Please go ahead and do the best you can to get it to number 35, 36, whatever and get as many people as you can to sign up using this link because you can get $20 just for signing up in the month of September. And if you want to follow along with me with my investments, like I said, this link is in the description if you want to see my portfolio and track it along with me. But overall, guys, the portfolio is doing very good. There's my 27 holdings right there if you want to see it. Today is a very red day in the market, and I don't expect it to get better anytime soon if the market has been pretty overvalued. But regardless, guys, I'm depositing $100 every single Monday, including this week. I just bought some more stocks this morning. I'm filming this on Monday, and this is coming out on Wednesday. But there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.